Now that I have your attention with the title, Lords of the Fallen, I believe, can be a solid game over time as devs continue to support and put out patches for the game. But it's held back by some questionable mechanics, of which I will get into later, and along that performance issues that's hard not to ignore, regardless of what platform you're on since its launch. However, underneath it all, there is a foundation with its unique take on the Souls-like subgenre that deserves its flower despite what naysayers may think about the game. But before I dive into any further, let's get some disclaimers out of the way. I am not new to the genre. Yes, get good homeless and skill issues that I might see in the comments. At the time of writing this, I have close to over 80 hours on the game across multiple characters and started a new game plus playthrough to get the other two endings. Also, I'm not a big PvPer when it comes to these games. The only one where I did do a lot of PvP was Dark Souls 3. So my thoughts will be primarily PvE focus. Be warned of potential spoilers of bosses and areas as far as footage is concerned. Now with that out of the way, let's first talk about things I do love about Lords of the Fallen. The graphics and art direction in this game, Lords of the Fallen is Souls-like to come out using Unreal Engine 5. It's a great looking game. During my journey through Mornstead, there's been numerous of times I've stopped to take a moment and admire how beautiful the world is, as well as the dark and dreary atmosphere, especially when you're traversing through Umbral, which is unique in and of itself. How eerie and creepy when you take a look around. I am no game developer by any means, but stitching it together the realms have to have been such a nightmare. And a technical marvel. I have some criticism about the audio design, which I'll get into later, but the environmental sound design for this game is something they got right when going through Umbral or even in Axiom hearing all the different sounds. The enemy and bosses are unique in terms of visual, the use of the umbral lamp from peering into the other realm to the use of it during certain boss fight, traversal, and so flaying mimics. It was used for a lot more than I thought it was and slotting eyes in for different buffs. Mimics being an item instead of a typical chest, a different take than what we have seen. The use of throwables in this game using ammunition and how powerful they can be was fun to use, from hammers, axes, grenades, and such. I found it quite useful since on one character I was primarily a melee build and having that option to use throwables to pick off enemies from a distance when I wanted to. The co-op is nice when it works and going through it with a friend despite the progress not applying to both. The fact that you can still progress with both people even after defeating a boss instead of being disconnected. The variety of different armors you can get as well as boss armor along with the way that the boss souls or remembrance as they're called works in this game. You're not limited to having to pick just one item till the next playthrough so as long as you have enough umbral scourings to purchase it. Another is each of the three factions has an armor set you can earn. There are also ones to be added later on to the game and the use of shaders or tinks that alter each piece of armor as you choose, which I personally love when it comes to customization. Give me more options in any game. Since when it comes to your physical character, it doesn't really matter all that much to me since I normally have gear on, but I understand for those that do naked runs or whatever, why that customization would still matter. This is something we haven't really seen in other souls like that's been missing and adds to the customization and involvement with the faction as I mentioned a little before. Lastly, the support and content roadmap they plan for this game, from added quest lines, new armors, and quality of life improvements in upcoming patches for the game, as well as added randomizers for those that like doing challenge runs. Even if they didn't get it perfect and polished at launch, I can still appreciate their efforts in trying to get things right. 
Now, let's get to the aspects of Lords of the Fallen that I don't like. I played Lords of the Fallen back in 2014, and this game is a massive improvement in comparison. While it is rough around the edges in some aspect more than others, and when this game was first announced, I was definitely cautious of it since the first one left a bad impression on me. I vividly remember how slow it felt and the god awful camera shake that you couldn't turn off. Initially, I went into it perhaps like many others did, expecting FromSoft's level of combat and such, since after all, they are the pioneer of this new popular subgenre thanks to Elden Ring. There are many newcomers. Instead of taking it for what it is, it's human nature for us to compare things similar to previous experience we've had, and in this case, gaming. Comparison is the thief of joy, Teddy Roosevelt. While it checks off the dark fantasy, too often we compare it this to that. You end up setting yourself up for disappointment when it doesn't turn out like what you thought or expect it to be. One of my biggest complaints when I first started playing was the forward momentum you get behind your actions, from attacking to rolling that got me killed more times than I could count. The roll is quite generous, however movement feels better compared to the first. It's not as stiff and slow. Map or rather level design doesn't always seem to accommodate this and in particular to Pilgrim's Perch where you almost wanted to avoid using the dodge roll as doing so will guarantee falling to your death. At times I found myself getting lost especially in Forsaken Fen and everything just looking the same. Once I took a step back and stopped expecting the game to play like something else, I found myself enjoying the game much more than I did initially and the forward momentum didn't frustrate me as much. Now let's talk about the lock on. In these games, the camera and the lock-on in these games can be a little janky in certain encounters. But in this one, it's by far the roughest. I don't know how many encounters where it's gotten me killed besides the momentum because it tends to prioritize enemies further than me than the ones closest to me. The side quests, or more specifically summons in this game. These game side quests can often be obscure, but in particular this one, they're a companion you can summon during a boss fight, but only after upon death, after the first initial encounter is when they appear. They don't show up before you go in, so if you manage to beat the bosses on the first try, you would never even see it. A simple fix to this would just show it, period, so players would have the option to go in solo or summon an NPC from the jump. Sound design is much better than it was initially. However, another one of my biggest complaints, for example, during the Spurn Progeny boss fight is the lack of sound feedback when you're getting hit. Oftentimes, especially during the boss fight, when there's a lot going on, I catch myself having to look at my health bar to notice that I took damage because there was no auditory feedback indicating I got hit. Another critique I have is the dialogue for Xactor Dunmire, or NPCs never once really change when you're being tasked with something so important as snuffing the beacons outside of the side quest related ones. The dialogue never changes to reflect that progress you made in your journey or how far you've come. Now enemy variety. I think after you play a few of these Souls games, it comes to no surprise to anyone when bosses you face that may become regular enemies you face later on. My problem is how common it is in later parts of the game. From Sister Deleth, I don't know how to pronounce that, the Lady with the Hounds, Infernal Enchantress, and the Tower of Penance boss. That boss that you just face outside only to fight him a hundred more times as you make your way down the freaking tower. Hour. Not only that, but in particular sections of the game, the enemy scaling there in particular hit ridiculously harder than any other areas when you've unlocked the door by the bell room in Pilgrim's Perch. Now for the vestige and flower beds. I love the uniqueness of the flower beds and the use of vestige seeds essentially to create your own bonfire, but where they failed in my opinion is not allowing players to have more than one active, especially with their original vision for the game. So for those that don't know, the original vision for New Game Plus prior to patch 1.1.22 is that all vestiges you found in your first playthrough would no longer be available with the exception of the Skyrest Bridge and the one seedling that you have planted. That's it. Yes, 
While the world is interconnected, taking that away from the player makes the game tedious, even if you have shortcuts. So I'm glad they made that change due to the overwhelming negative feedback they received. If it wasn't for this change on New Game Plus, I would have not replayed this game whatsoever and just been one and done. But I figured despite the changes to include it in this video, since that was one of the biggest reasons I wouldn't have bothered to continue playing this game anymore after I beat it. Allowing for those two new game plus zero where you can keep your levels and all except for key quest items while the world state remains the same or new game plus whereas you progress to new game plus two where vestiges will slowly disappear enemies and bosses increasingly getting more difficult i'm glad they listened to the community and made these big changes new game plus zero is pretty much easy mode after beating the game for the first time that you've earned and i wish more games implemented that for those of us who want to try trophy hunt, at least in this subgenre. So for things I would like to see improvements on that I can come up with so far, easily visibility to see how much vigor you have to spend when interacting with an NPC vendor, like more obvious and in a better spot, as well as sorting items in armor set next to each other. Stop auto equipping new pickup items. Indicators of what spells, armor, weapons you already have in your inventory versus what vendors have. And decrease the amount on faction currency to purchase armor sets. Lastly, while I do love this genre, I don't identify with the so community. Oftentimes, the elitism people tend to have about the difficulty of bosses or the game itself when it's not a FromSoft game. Now, if this doesn't apply to you, let it fly. The bosses in this game I found were unique and some require unique mechanics in order to defeat. These games will always be as easy or as difficult as you want it to be. People have this sort of mentality of, oh, if you insert thing here, it's cheap. If it's too easy, don't level or upgrade your weapon. If it's too hard, utilize all the different things in the game at your disposal, whether it's summons, throwables, and part of this, if it's your first souls ever, can be difficult as it requires you to have some sort of game knowledge. Outside of learning the timing of things you can control, whether it's when to attack, dodge, roll, and learn enemy attack patterns, difficulty in these games are and will always be subjective. In closing, I think Lord of the Fallen isn't a bad game and has some unique ideas others can take away from the genre. While it's certainly rough around the edges, I still find myself enjoying the game despite some of its flaws. I can see what they're going for and there's potential there. Hoping to see the game be further improved as well as future games from them. Lord of the Fallen unfortunately wasn't the first or the only game in 2023 that launched with optimization issues. Just look at these games, Forspoken, Redfall, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and Wild Hearts just to name a few. I believe it's a game that will continue to get better over time than its initial launch with those at Hexworks continuing to push patches out for the game as well as supporting it with additional content well after its launch. If you are debating on whether or not you should pick it up, maybe wait a month or two from now as patches are still coming out and depending on what platform you get it on. There are still performance issues to improve as well as additional features to make gameplay experience better. If you made it to the end of this video, feel free to let me know what your experience has been like or leave a comment with gravity wins so I know you've reached the end. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, take care. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs>